Hi there, Rachel Chase here, and in this video we will explore the multiplication rule using the basics, but also with conditional probability. A few definitions we need here are events are independent if they do not have an impact over one another. So for example, uh, whatever you do the first time, if you repeat that, the probability does not change from the first event to the second event occurring. So again, they do not change basically the sample space of what could occur. Another example of that, in, in terms of the deck of cards, because we've used this a few times now, is if you were to pick multiple cards, so let's say you pick a card, you look at it, and then you throw it away. If you don't put that card back in the deck, right, so we're throwing it away, you've just changed the sample space you have of other cards to pick from for the second time you pick and the third time and so on and so forth. So how does the multiplication rule work here? If you have, I need to emphasize here, multiple events, this is only used for multiple events. So you have to be specified, are we picking one card, two cards, three cards, etc. The probability of event A and B occurring in that specific order is equal to the probability of event A times the probability of event B. Now be mindful here, this is spe specifically for independent events, because as you can see below, we have a rule for dependent events. Unlike the formula for dealing with addition, it's not the same. We do actually need separate formulas here. Now, if your events are dependent, we can say that the probability of event A and then event B occurring is equal to the probability of A times the probability of, we read this as, B, given that A has already occurred. So again, because it's saying that given that A has already occurred, this means that your sample space has changed, so this is what the probability of B is now that our sample space has changed. Let's take a few examples. The first question you ask is if you're dealing with information that you can actually see the simple change in your sample space, find out first if your events are going to be looked at with replacement or without replacement. So consider your standard deck of 52 cards. If you're not familiar with what the deck of cards looks like, there is a, a general setup. Uh, we'll do a run through of that, but I would recommend that you take a look, just do a Google search for an image that lays them all out for you. So any deck of cards that's standard will have 26 red and 26 black. You have four suits. These four suits are hearts, diamonds, you have also spades, and clubs. So if there are 52 cards total and you have four suits, there are 13 of each suit. And then you also have four of each kind of card. So for example, you have four twos, four threes, four queens, four kings, four aces, etc. Considering our standard deck of 52 cards, with replacement, what is the probability of selecting a king and then a queen? Because we're specifying with replacement here, so we're picking two cards, with replacement means that our events will be independent of each other. There is no change in our sample space from one to the next. So the probability of selecting a king and then a queen would be we have four kings out of 52 times four queens out of 52. There's a bunch of approaches. Please, by all means, just use technology to calculate these. If you know how to reduce them by hand, that's fine. Um, you do end up with pretty big numbers here. If you're simplifying by hand, you get 1 over 13. 1 over 13. So when we multiply straight across, that is 1 over 169, which adds a decimal is 0 0.005, so 0 0.059, which if we looked at that as a percentage, that's 0.59%. So that's actually a very, very small percentage. It's not even one full percent. Next, with replacement, what is the probability of selecting a spade and a king? So we have a total of 13 spades, 
So our first probability would be a probability of spade, 13 out of 52, times probability of a king is 4 out of 52, which gives us, well, 13 times 4 is 52, so those can simplify one of our denominators here. It gives us 1 over 52, which adds a decimal, 0 0.019 which is about 1.9% since we did have to round that. So again, very small probability. Now, what if instead of with replacement, we change that to without replacement? So now, once we pick the first card, we're throwing it away. It's not going back in the deck, which means that these events are no longer independent. So we need the probability, we're going to do the same ones as before, king and queen. So the first card, our king is equal to 4 out of 52. However, because we threw that card away, there are still four queens in the deck, but we no longer have 52 cards. We only have 51 cards. So we can simplify as we did before. This gives us 16 over. Let's do this a little differently just to practice. So that's 2652 in the denominator. Now, if you wanted to reduce this in the calculator, so we have 16 divided by 2652. Using the TI-84, you can press math and then use the first option to convert this back to a fraction. That gives us 4 over 663. If you want that as a decimal, depending on the context, is 0 0.006 when rounded. General rule of thumb for dealing with uh, rounding here is minimum of three places, maybe four, depending on kind of what the values are, are you converting into a percentage, etc. One more example here. What if we want to select two kings in a row without replacement? So this is where we have to be a little bit more cautious. So two kings in a row. The t first time we pick the king, the probability is standard. However, the second king that we pick, just like we saw earlier, we no longer have 52 cards in the deck. We only have 51. But because that card was thrown out, we no longer have four kings. There are only three. So this is where things change a little bit. So when we multiply, this gives us 12 over 2652, and then we can reduce that. So it gives us about 0 0.005 when rounded, or depending on if you need a reduced fraction, use your conversion key again, we get 1 over 221. For the next part of our video, let's take a look a little bit more closely at using conditional probability. So that is when we have dependent events, the given portion of what we're doing. Conditional probability denoted the probability of B given A is equal to where they overlap, so where they both happen at the same time, divided by the probability of the given statement. So if you think about our, our formula from earlier when dealing with dependent events, all it is here is isolating the B given A portion by dividing both sides by the probability of A. So if you're very comfortable with algebra, that should seem pretty straightforward. So same thing as before. This piece is B given that A has already occurred. Let's go back to our example that we did earlier using the uh, joint probability table, also known as a contingency table. So same rule applies. As soon as you have the table, the first thing you should do is to add up all of your rows and add up all your columns. Now that we've done, we've done that, let's take a look at a few examples. Find the probability of selecting a red truck. So something that has both of those properties. We have, if we look at our red vehicles and go to trucks, we have six of them. So that probability is 6 over 52. 
and then we'll just write that as a decimal, which is 0.115, so about 11.5%. What is the probability of selecting a red and black vehicle? So can we select a red and black vehicle at the same time? Just like we talked about earlier, when the colors are different, those cannot occur at the same time, so that would be an impossible probability. So the probability of it being red and black is zero. What is the probability of selecting a sedan, given that the vehicle is white? So what we learned is this is the probability of selecting where it has the same, so it's a sedan and white at the same time, and then you divide it by the probability of the given. So first things first here, how many white sedans do we have? We have eight out of 52 white sedans. So that's our numerator. And then that gets divided by the probability of selecting any white vehicle, which is 22 out of 52. Now, something to point out here is this is, in fact, a complex fraction. However, you'll notice that our 52s will cancel out because if we rewrite this, we have 8 over 52 times, flip the denominator, this is 52 over 22, and our 52s cancel, giving us 8 over 22. That's going to be the rule every single time, so we have to deal with dividing fractions. Our final answer gives us 0.364. Now, instead of looking at it this way, some people prefer to use a shortcut method, and we'll do that for the next one. So let's start by writing this out. The probability of selecting a black vehicle, given that it is an SUV. So this is the probability of selecting a black vehicle that's also an SUV, and dividing it by the total number of SUVs, which are the given. The shortcut is looking at where they overlap, so we have black SUVs, that's 8 of them, divide by the given. The given is 15, so we would say that that is 8 over 15. If you prefer, you can use the method like we did up here, which would have been 8 over 22 divided by 15 over 22, I'm sorry, 52 for each one. So whichever method you prefer, again, keep in mind that when you simplify this, when you do your fraction multiplication and division there, your denominators end up canceling out, which is why the shortcut technique works. And that gives us 0.533. One last thing to be very mindful of here is that these two statements are not interchangeable. So, what happens if we looked at something like, what is the probability, so separate question, the probability of selecting an SUV given that the vehicle is black? So that would still be we have eight black SUVs, and then we have to divide by the total number of black vehicles. So in this case, that is also 15. Now again, this is just a sheer coincidence. It's just based how our sample space turned out. So it's something to be careful of. We may not assume that this is true. And an example of where they wouldn't be the same, again, it's just a coincidence that they're the same, is what if we flipped around and instead of sedans given that they're right, what if we asked for a white vehicle given that it's a sedan? So we have eight white sedans. However, how many sedans do we have in total? 14. So our given is 14, so we divide that by 14. 8 over 22 and 8 over 14 are not the same amount. Again, just following up that these are not always going to be the same. They might be coincidentally, but you have to be cautious of that. Thanks for watching this video. Our next video will conclude with counting of probabilities.